So when you throw a slab of clay, you want to be paying attention first of all to your initially cut off slab of clay from your clay block. Uh, it's best to use a block that has not been dropped, that has not been deformed, that's perfectly cubular, as it were. Um, and then you want to cut that slab off as even as possible. So this slab is a little thicker here, a little thinner right here, a little thicker here. Uh, if it were perfectly cut off from a nice fresh slab, we'd be better off. You know, you can kind of drop on the sides to even it out, but that's only going to do some good. But if I'm not too concerned about that, I can just go ahead and start throwing my clay down and stretching it out to make a slab. Um, but like I say, the more even it is to begin with, the more even a slab you're going to get. Uh, generally, I cut the edges off anyway, so it's not that big of a deal for me, or I use it to do a coil building process. So, and that is not, it's, it's pretty forgiving. So, I'm gonna need a porous work surface, either a wooden table to work on or an absorbent wear board. If I throw this down onto like a piece of plastic board or a tile or a laminated board, it's just going to, uh, it's just, you're gonna throw it down, it's gonna get stuck. So we want it to stick a little bit. This clay, I'm gonna be coming, throwing it down. And as it comes down, I'm gonna be pulling it in this direction so it's going to have force inertia coming this way and it's going to stretch the clay out and that's what's going to flatten my slab and gradually make it longer this way it's not going to get any longer in that direction uh, just like when you're rolling a slab it's only really going to go in the direction that you're working so um, if you want to keep your slab square you're going to need to keep continually rotating your slab 40, 90, 90 degrees in order to maintain that, that square nature. If I want to keep stretching it in one direction only, I'm going to throw it down and just keep throwing it down in that same direction until it elongates to the length, length and width that I want it. Okay? So with that said, again, porous surface, clean surface, this is going to pick up any materials that are in this uh, board. And I don't want to just wham it straight down. That's going to just splat in all kinds of directions. I want to have a little more control. So I want to be holding this and pulling this slab toward me as I release. Okay? So I'm going to lift from the, from the back side very gently and, and very gently with my thumbs about like so. I'm gonna lift it, slam it down, and just before it hits, I'm gonna release with my fingers and the inertia is going to pull this clay toward me and stretch it out. And you want it to do that. You want it to smack right down. Now, I'm using this board. I'm gonna have to push my gut into this board, do a little core workout, because otherwise this whole board is just going to slide and it's not going to actually stretch the clay. First couple times it's going to be difficult to peel up. Try not to dig your fingers in too much because you don't want to deform that slab. Gently. Now if you want to keep it square, can tamp down all the sides like so. I can lift it from this side to keep it square. Tamp down the side. Lift the far side. Whichever direction feels good to you, keep on going that same direction, that same rotation. The edges are invariably going to get thinner than the middle. That's just how this process works. So it's not perfect, 
but if you don't have a slab roller, you got to start somewhere. If you get a big fold like that, fold it in. At some point, I just forget about those edges and say, I'm going to cut them off. Okay, so there's your basic slab. It's kind of uneven. Uh, the thinner you stretch it, believe it or not, the more even it's going to get, is what I've found. So, see how long I can now stretch this clay. And these make for really nice these really, really thin slabs, I li like to use them in a drape mold or a, over a, a hump mold. They can take on the, the shape and, of the form and kind of ruffle. Um, it's really, I think it's really cool. But there you have the basic thrown slab. But if you cut off the edges, you'll see I mean, you can get it really thin. And this is actually pretty consistent, consistently thin. I find that if, if you try and get it to be a long slab as opposed to a square, a perfect square, you're gonna end up pretty, fairly consistent in the thickness. And also the thinner you go with these, the more cons consistent it gets. I can continue to stretch this out though, just for fun. See how thin you can get these slabs. It can be a really fun time.